Hey guys, today we are talking about Enon and their brand new X20 head unit. This is a seven inch non-Android head unit. It actually has an operating system that's based on Linux and it's gonna rival large companies like Pioneer, Alpine, Sony, Rode Angel. But what sets this aside is that it has wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay, and it actually has a QLED display, which means it's got a really high top quality display as well. Let's check it out. So if you don't know who Enon are, they're very well respected in the Android head unit industry. They've been around for many years. In fact, my very, very first Android head unit that I ever installed was an Enon many years ago. If you go on their website, you're gonna find that they make head units for specific cars. That means that you get head units which will go into the car and look factory with dash trims and everything to make them look like they're meant to be in the car. They also do universal head units like the one that I'm about to show you today. Now, as usual, I will tell you that I don't get paid to endorse any company or product. So this review is gonna be solely based on me setting it up and using it. Right, let's get it out of the box and have a look. And here it is, and I can already tell you that I like it quite a lot because it's not using the standard Android body, like these kind of bodies, which make it quite difficult to go into standard double DIN environments. And what Enon have done is they've given you standard double DIN dimensions, which means it's gonna be really, really easy to slip into a double DIN cage, which I will show you later. On the front here, you can see it has these lovely buttons along the bottom. You have an auxiliary input here, a USB entry point, and a micro SD card input here with an internal mic built into the top. If we turn it around, you can see the body's made of this kind of die cast metal. Uh, that looks like a fan, but it's not. It's just a design on the back of this unit. You've got the main loom entry point here. You've got front and rear camera inputs here. You've got two video outs for rear monitors. You've got a subwoofer output here. You've got video and audio in here. That's the auxiliary inputs for audio. And then down here, you have your left and right audio out pre-outs. You also have an external microphone socket here, and you have a USB port, which is for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And then just hiding behind these wires, you'll see an FM antenna here. Also in the box, you get an ISO cable, an external microphone, which is great. They've given you a spare fuse in case you blow the one that's actually in it some screws, a manual, and interestingly, they've also given you an AHD reverse camera. So this is not a cheap reverse camera, it's an AHD one. So it's gonna be nice and sharp and it was free as well. So that's really good. Right, let's go and set it up in the car. So here we are in the Saab 9.3 with the Enon X20 installed. So as usual, the first thing that we're gonna do is gonna turn the car on and see how long it takes to boot up. So ignition is now on. And on logos on screen. Okay, so here's the dashboard, and as you can see, it says data loading, and the buttons are flashing different colors at the moment. Okay, so it's detected that it's Bluetooth to the S9. Okay, and there's Android Auto. Just pause that music. Right, um, so as you can see, it went straight to Android Auto, and just so you're aware, that is what this head unit is for. It's for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and it instantly goes into it as soon as you turn it on. It detects that the phone is in the car via Bluetooth and just links straight to it, which is really, really great. And I'll show you Android Auto later, um, but let's have a look at the dashboard. So this is what you get when it's not connected to a phone. So you get this dashboard with a big clock time and date on here. You get the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay icons here. You have the home icon, which will go to the settings, which I'll show you in a second. You've got Bluetooth, which means that you can play music directly without Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. And then you have the radio here. So if I just hit this, uh, that's what this looks like. You've got six different presets, which you can put your stations into, and you do have RDS here, but unfortunately it doesn't save the station name on these buttons. It uh, only has the frequency, but you can actually see the station name on the screen here. So if we go home, you can see it has some other options here as well. 
mirror link and airplay are here you have your phone functionality via bluetooth here usb gives you the ability to view the files on the usb stick and the same with the sd card so that might be music or video camera will show you the front facing camera AV in is your AV input, which will give you the video and audio from the analog video inputs on the back of this. And then we have setup. And the setup is where you'll find all of the different options. So you key light here, causing these physical buttons to flash different colors. But we're in a Saab. Saab lighting is green, so I've just set it to green and there we go. There is a logo option, but it's behind a password, which I don't know what that is, so I can't show you that. The screen itself has its own options, so you can actually change the contrast hue and saturation of the screen to have it set however you want. I haven't really ever seen these kind of options on a head unit, so I guess that's pretty cool. And then we have the sound options, which are very interesting to us, of course. So the main point here is the equalizer, and you do have a 16 band graphic equalizer, which I've set up specifically for this car, but you can use any of the presets that you see along the bottom here, which is cool as well. Now VBase has gain and frequency control. I believe this is for an external subwoofer because these actually make no difference whatsoever when I change them, but I don't have a subwoofer in this car so that's probably why that is. Balance is the fade and balance, nice and easy. You can move it front, back, left and right using these buttons. Emperor allows you to set specific speaker delays per speaker uh, manually here if you wanted to do that to get the right sound, but you can just set it to prioritize the driver which will do all of that automatically for you. Now the loudness settings on this head unit actually allow you to select the frequency that you want to increase the gain on. Uh, and that's cool because normally you just have loudness on or off on a lot of head units and you don't actually get the specific increase. Of course, that's not really required because you do have the 16 band graphic equalizer, but it's a cool feature nonetheless. And finally, you have your frequency filters down here. So you've got your high pass filter and your low pass filters here, and you can select the frequencies from these options as well. So you do get loads and loads of features for the sound manipulation with this head unit. So you are really going to be able to control how the audio sounds, which is very, very good indeed. Well, let's have a quick look at Android Auto. So if I hit Android Auto, you can see it's gone directly uh, to Spotify, which is the app that's playing at the moment. But I have access to Google Maps and it's very, very quick. It, it's doing everything that I needed to do. So I've got access to all my apps on this head unit, nice and quick, just like you would on a factory head unit of a more modern car. So that's really cool. Well, let's have a look at uh, Apple CarPlay. So here's my trusty iPhone. I'm going to turn the Bluetooth on and Enon. Here it is. So connecting to Enon. Connected. Knock. There we go. So now we have full Apple CarPlay on this head unit as well. Yeah, and it's perfect as well. So let's have a look at Spotify here. Yeah, have access to all my playlists and everything here. That's great. Google Maps works absolutely fine. Yeah, so here we go. So we have full. Apple CarPlay on this head unit. It looks great, it reacts really fast. So the main functionality of this head unit, which is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, work absolutely fine. Now there are two main issues that I have personally experienced with this head unit, which I'm going to explain to you now. That, that might be because this one's faulty, or it might just be because this is just the way they are. So the first is, the reverse camera. I have not got my reverse camera connected to this head unit at the moment because when I do, it causes problems. One of the good features of this Saab 93 is it tells me if a bulb has blown. For example, if one of my reverse lights is blown, it's gonna tell me on the display that one of them is blown. And it does that by sending a pulse voltage to all of the lights every five seconds to make sure that all the bulbs are okay. Now the issue is this Enon actually picks up that tiny voltage that goes to the reverse bulb which is connected to this and what that means is every five seconds the screen turns off for a moment every five seconds and not when the car's in reverse just normally when it's connected it's just going to go off every five seconds obviously that makes it not usable so i've had to disconnect the reverse camera so i've got no reverse camera functionality on this head unit at the moment that's a problem and it just stems from the fact that it's detecting that very very small canvas pulse and uh, it shouldn't do that all of the other head units that i've tested don't do that but for some reason this enon does and the second thing that's not working with this head unit is the steering wheel control now the way that it works is it's supposed to detect resistances and voltage from the canvas decoder for this car like every other head unit that i test but for some reason 
it will not detect that I'm pressing any buttons on the steering wheel and therefore I cannot program the buttons on my car to work with this head unit. Not a massive deal because the Enon does actually have these lovely physical buttons which means I can just press them here rather than here but still that's a fairly annoying thing. Now I want to be clear I'm not saying that these units have faults this might just be due to my personal circumstances or some way that I've connected it up but these are the issues that I'm having with it and obviously you know that I deal with these things all the time and I just cannot get this to work with the reverse camera or the steering wheel controls. But all in all, the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wireless functionality works absolutely great and it does sound amazing too, so it is a decent little unit. I hope this video was useful for you. If you have any questions about this unit, just ask in the comments and I'll see if I can get back to you.